Hello guys, in this video we'll be analyzing the autosomal DNA of two Sarmatian individuals from the southern Urals near Chelyabinsk city in Russia. Now, this first individual is a female and let's get into her phenotype. This is her predicted phenotype. With Nasha Kot, she's predicted to have either brown or hazel eyes. Uh, Greek shaped nose and blonde hair. Now with YSEC, YSEC actually did not give her an eye color prediction because she wasn't genotyped for the main uh, BH2 variant that YSEC looks for to determine eye color. Uh, with Snipper Free, she's predicted to have white skin, green or hazel eyes and blonde hair, which is sort of the same as what uh, Maina Shakot predicted for her. She had a very rare variant that increased the risk of rheumatoid arthritis, which is a bone disease. She had impaired muscle performance and was most likely an endurance athlete rather than a strength athlete. So this is one of the variations that has to do with strength versus endurance. And she had this rare genotype that increases the risk of obesity for humans. When it comes to polygenic traits, she had an average risk score for type 1 diabetes. She had a very low risk score for Crohn's disease. Uh, she had a very low risk score for coronary heart disease. She had a low risk score for Parkinson's disease. She had a low risk score for type 2 diabetes. And she also had a low risk score for bipolar disorder. This is what she scores with Eurogenes K13. This is a pretty typical result for a Sarmatian, as you could see with other Sarmatians that I've posted on my channel. Um, there is about 25, 25 or 30 percent West Asian, uh, a little bit of South Asian, and there is no West Med out here. This is a very typical result for an Iranic individual from Russia, from the Euro region. Uh, she's closest to Tatars as, as single population and mixed mode. She's getting modeled as a mixture of Finnish plus uh, Balochi or Brahvi or line number three, which I like, Finnish plus Tabasaran, which is what you see with G25 for this sample actually and this is what she scores with MDLP K23B what's interesting here is that aside from all the you can ex you can pause and explore but she's scoring some archaic African here which is a uniquely Neanderthal component aside from that she's actually scoring quite a lot of southern admixture South Central Asian and Caucasus quite a lot of this and because of this southern admixture she's closest to Tajiks with the single population sharing for the Oracle uh, however with the maximum population sharing she's getting modeled as a mixture of uh, Pamiri plus Baltic or Lithuanian or Latvian or uh, Belarusian, so basically a mixture of Northeast European today plus some kind of a Pamiri person. Now when you analyze the official G25 coordinates for this sample, you see that Eurogenes K13 was actually a little bit closer to the truth, uh, a little bit closer to reality than these MDLP calculators. That's why she's getting modeled as a mixture of Darginian plus Latvian and not uh, you know, Tajik plus Latvian or Tajik plus Baltic as what was shown with MDLP. Uh, this is what she scores with PanDNA LK10. Uh, she has actually 34% CHG, a lot of Caucasus ancestry, uh, which is typical for uh, Iranic people in Russia. And she's getting modeled as a mixture of Mardvin plus Brahvi or Mar Mardvin plus Baloch. So clearly not a typical Northern European by today's standards, very Southern compared to modern uh, Northeast Europeans. And she's scoring 30% Caucasus HG with PanDNA LK12. Once again, a lot of Caucasus related admixture. And with the Oracle here, she's getting modeled as a mixture of Scottish plus Pashtun or Tajik Pamiri plus Romanian. So basically very Southern, not like the modern Russians who live in Chelyabinsk Oblast today. This is what she scores with Ancient Eurasia K6 by Gedrosia. Now she's actually scoring not as much Natufin as you would expect. Like she's so close to Tajiks, you'd think she'd get a lot of the Southern component. Uh, but no, she's actually got a lot of uh, ancestral North Eurasian and West European hunter-gatherer, not so much Natufian, right? And with the Oracle here, she's getting modeled as a mixture of Iron Age step plus all kinds of Italians or Sicilians, but don't really pay attention to this because the Iron Age step here, the sample that's a part of this category here, the sample that they use as a reference, is not an Iron Age step. It's some kind of a hunter-gatherer, probably an Eastern hunter-gatherer. Uh, so this is not a legitimate result here. And with Gidrosia K3, she's scoring 14% East Eurasian, which is very different from what like modern Turkic people who live where she lived uh, would score. Like Bashkir people are indigenous to Chilabinska Oblast, right? And they would score maybe 45 or 40% East Eurasian here. Now this next sample is a man and he was um, also very interesting for me to do because I actually have the same Y DNA as him. Now my paternal lineage comes down to Ukraine. So I probably actually did pick up it from somebody like him. Maybe he is even my ancestor. <laughs> my ancestor. Now, um, when it comes to phenotype, he's predicted to have blue eyes with an amber center, Greek shaped nose and black hair. Uh, definitely had black hair, but in terms of the blue, the eye color and the nose shape, not maybe not so not such a good prediction, right? Uh, Ysek is predicting him to have uh, blue eyes and uh, 
actually dark skin very weird prediction but with snipper free snipper free predicts him to have white skin snipper free oxid actually snipper free predicts him to have blonde hair which is very interesting and snipper free predicts him to have uh, blue eyes he had some variation in his genotype for example uh, he did not have the derived slc 45a2 variations that have to do with light skin in europeans so maybe he did indeed have slightly darker skin tone uh, when it comes to Comte's Val Met variant, he was uh, Val Val, which means warrior with the IO. This is a very like non-European genotype to have. I mean, it's common in Europeans too, but it's more common outside of Europe, right? And um, this, the connotations of this genotype is that he had quicker dopamine reuptake, which means less dopamine in his system, right? So less dopamine, less motivation, less attention, that kind of stuff. Uh, with ACT1, he had greater odds of cannabis-induced psychosis, which is also kind of a rare genotype for Europeans to have. Um, when it comes to OX OXTR, he had derived OXTR, at least at least this one variation that he was genotyped for, which means uh, maybe a little bit of the sociopath gene here. And um, in DRD2, he had this very rare genotype, only 5%, commonality is only 5%, and this genotype increases the risk of alcoholism. And um, he also did not have the European lactose persistence mutation, which means was most likely lactose intolerant as an adult. Now, this is a very typical genotype for every uh, non-Central, non-Northern European, uh, so maybe not such a surprise here. And um, he did not have the European mutation that protects against myopia, so might have needed glasses. Myopia is like nearsightedness or farsightedness where you can't see something in a distance. And um, he did not have the East Asian alcohol flush variation that has to do with the uh, increased risk of alcoholism and basically uh, like flushing red when you drink alcohol so he did not have this and he had the same variation that the previous sarmatian also had the previous sarmatian woman had which increases the risk of obesity when it comes to polygenic traits he had a super high risk of crohn's disease he had a high risk of type 1 diabetes he also had a high risk of coronary heart disease uh, he also had a pretty high above average risk of Parkinson's disease. He also had a average or maybe below average risk of asthma. Uh, he had an average risk of bipolar disorder and he had a pretty low risk of schizophrenia. This is what he scores with the Eurogenes K13. This is a pretty typical result for a Sarmatian and also is similar to what you've seen with the previous woman. Uh, now, with the oracle for this calculator, he is closest to Tatars and Tajiks, which is also what you see with um, G25. Now, he's getting modeled as a mixture of Tabasaran plus East Finnish or Tajik plus Finnish. So, basically, a kind of a mixture of Tabasaran or Tajik plus Northeast European. And with the MZLP K23B, he's actually scoring a little bit of archaic human category, which is, uh, this is the component that Neanderthals, all kinds of monkeys and apes score, mostly. But he's scoring a little bit of it too, which is kind of interesting. And uh, with the oracle here, he's closest to Yagnobi Tajiks, followed by Mishar Tatars, which is what you see. It's precisely what you see with uh, G25, and he's getting modeled as a mixture of Tajik, Yagnobi, plus Vepsian, Karelian, Mardvin, or basically a mixture of Tajik plus some kind of Eastern European today. The official G25 for this sample is closest to Tajiks and uh, Tatars, and it's actually getting modeled as a mixture of Tajik plus Finnish East, which is what you see with the previous and the following... Uh, results with the oracles, right? With PanDNA LK10, he's actually scoring 36% CHG, which is a lot much more than what's typical for modern Eastern Europeans. So if somebody's out there pushing the narrative that Sarmatians or Scythian or these Iranic people in general were similar to uh, Northeast Europeans or your Central Europeans or whatever, or Germanic people, obviously that's wrong because no Germanic person, no Eastern European is going to score 32% Caucasus HG on this calculator here. And no, no Germanic person, no Eastern European in the world is going to score this kind of a result uh, with the Oracle, which is basically half Tajik plus half Mardvin. And there was also this a very prevailing belief that Scythians and Sarmatians did not have any BMAC admixture, that they were just like pure Andronovo or whatever. Obviously that's a myth, obviously that's untrue, because Andronovo is much more northern with these calculators. Andronovo does not score like these individuals score. This is what he scores with Ancient Eurasia K6, and if you've been paying attention, you would, you would notice that he's actually more northern than the previous woman. She, he's got 29% Natufian, she's got 31, so he's less Natufian than her, which means more northern. And this is what he scores with Gidrosia K3. Uh, he's got only 15% East Eurasian. Once again, as the previous point that I've uh, talked about in, in the previous individual, right? Uh, modern inhabitants of Chilabinskai Oblast would score, I mean, natives of Chilabinskai Oblast, such as Tatars, you know, or Bashkirs, whoever is native there, they would score 40, 45% East Eurasian here. He's only got 15. 
So as always, thank you for watching until the end and you can download both of these samples in 23andMe format from link which is in the description and leave a like and subscribe if you enjoy what I do here on YouTube.